Hello and welcome to the broadcast. This is Unicorns of Love versus Top Esports, the number one LCL team versus the number one LPL team. Uh, as we get into champ select here, we have Jax banned by Unicorns of Love. 369 is an excellent Jax player. Absolutely dominated the last time he played Jax at Worlds. Um, the split push, push pressure, absolutely beyond immense. Um, so a good ban here by Unicorns of Love to start it off early. Uh, followed by the Swain ban by Top Esports. Swain being a very powerful uh, pick right now, especially in solo queue. Uh, not seen much Worlds play, but you know it, it is there. Um, and then we also have Gragas and Nidalee both banned. Uh, Gragas is an early game focused ganker, so I, I guess they're trying to deny that a little bit from Karsa. Um, with Nidalee being more of the power clear. Uh, and with Unicorns of Love being blue side, uh, that means they get first pick. So the Nidalee is a, is, is a good denial pick because there's very little that hard counters it. And it's also great for those extended team fights, getting off poke in those fights. Uh, it, it's a very good ban. Uh, moving on, though, we have the Renekton banned out. Number three ban for Unicorns of Love before we get into picks here. A very strong top laner. You can tell that Unicorns of Love is trying to deny 369 as much as they can before they get into this game and put him on something that he's really not comfortable with, if that's possible. But 369 is an excellent, probably the best top laner at Worlds. And so it's going to be hard to, uh, to knock him on to something that he's not comfortable with. Champion pool is extremely diverse. Um, and, and as we get into the picks here, we have Lucian and... Uh, a Syndra hover, that's interesting. Lucindra has been known to be the uh, counter to Lucian, so it makes a lot of sense here. Both of the mid lane picks first for both teams. That's fascinating. Uh, Lucian, a very safe pick, very aggressive pick. Uh, he can be punished by a jungler. Oh, and that Evelyn, post level 6. We'll see if they lock it in here. Could be very dangerous for that Lucian. They won't actually lock it in. Uh, we'll get the Ash instead. Uh, Ash having a 37% pick rate, um, but only a 33% win rate. That is actually incredible how much teams are valuing that pick with the win rate coming through like that. And obviously that's not reflective, you know, uh, of how the champion is actually doing. You know, that's more towards the teams that are picking her um, and less to do with that actual specific champion because the champion's utility provides a lot for the team with you know your potential to hawk shot uh scout out the enemy jungler you've got enchanted crystal arrow to find picks in the mid to late game it's a great champion and the win rate isn't really reflective of what she brings to the team comp um, but it is surprising to see that low of a win rate uh, for sure um here we have Lilia locked in, uh, the Nautilus locked in as well. 29% win rate on the Nautilus uh, with a pick rate of 26%. That's actually also very interesting. Uh, could make for a very, very volatile bot lane though, especially with the uh, Ash pick potential and the Nautilus all in potential. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes in a little bit. But right now we've got Lilia locked in. Very strong jungler in this meta. Going to be looking to take away those enemy raptors as much and as often as she can. Uh, just to deny the graves if they lock it in here. And they do lock it in here. Uh, from farming the entire you know game away. Uh, Lilia also offers a lot of pressure in those ganks. Which Grave does, Graves does as well with the smoke screen pressure. But uh, you know post 6 I would definitely favor Lilia to influencing the lanes. Just because she has that potential to put you know people to sleep. Uh, she has the movement speed to gap close. She has a ton of damage. Um, so, so I would definitely give the edge over here. And so far in pick ban, two Unicorns of Love. Just because that Lilia lock-in is, is really quite good. Uh, and Graves is not bad by any means. Another power farmer. Uh, you can do, you know, you can, you can adapt. You can go Ignite, things like that. Uh, ignite, Smite, Graves. Um, get the Red Smite down, become a little bit tankier. Uh, by no means is Graves a bad jungler. Uh, he's really, really strong right now, actually. But uh, I, I definitely favor the Lilia just a little bit more because she has that potential to influence fights a little bit heavier than Graves does, in my opinion. Um, but so far, we have the Orianna and Karthus bands coming out from Top Esports. That's interesting there. They're trying to get No Man's on a uh, on, on something that's not exactly comfort, you know? Uh, Karthus being a very, very strong pick. Uh, not often seen, but, you know... The ability to influence the entire map with that R. And No Man's is really good at Karthus. Um, it's a good ban there. Oriana's a very safe pick. Uh, but I am surprised to see these mid lane picks because we do already have Lucian and Syndra locked in. So I'm, I'm not really sure 
uh, what the focus is there. Maybe, maybe those are flex bands. Um, I, I think Oriana has been played to the bot lane a little bit. It's not, you know, by any means a prized pick, but it's it's flexible to that extent. And I think she can also be flex top with the Karthus jungle. But but once again, Lily is already locked in. So I'm really confused by these bands by top esports. Um, but we do have the Orn and Pantheon band coming in. Orn being a fantastic top laner. You know, once you hit 13, you can start getting those Orn uh, ornaments upgraded. Give your team as teammates that extra like 1,500 to 2,000 gold. Like with those upgrades coming through, uh, Orn, if he can make it safely to that that point in the game, uh, your your chances of winning become pretty pretty great. Uh, just for all from all the free gold you get. Uh, and the Pantheon as well. Pantheon support's been really prominent in this meta. They do have Lulu locked in, but they didn't before the ban, so that makes a lot of sense. We have Wukong locked in top. That's an aggressive top laner. Uh, it's what I like to see from Boss. Boss being a very, very uh, great top laner, honestly. Uh, but 369 is no chump. Uh, he is a, he's an incredible top laner. I'd be really surprised to see the Malphite locked in here. Yeah, that seems more likely. Uh, ooh, the Scion. So with the Scion lock in, we got we have infinite scaling on the side of 369. He's going to be wanting to do as much as he can to uh, get as tanky as possible and match the uh, Wukong. Oh, I'm sorry. They banned Orn. So the Wukong coming in. Uh, Wukong's effectiveness in teamfight is good, but if 369 can just tank it all, it's going to be hard for Boss to get a lot done in these team fights. So we'll see how that goes. They do lock in the Ziggs ADC. That's, wow. Um, not something you see often, but not a bad pick. Has a lot of potential to push and roam. A lot of potential to take turrets early. And it's kind of how Caitlyn used to be in the old metas, uh, where you get priority bot and you try to take as many plates and turrets as you can uh, while you have that power spike of Ziggs. Uh, Zig's satchel charge being able to destroy turrets below a certain percentage of health, which is, you know, if it, it can really add up if you take a Rift Herald down there, get it to like, you know, a plate and a half left, and then satchel charge, you can get the entire turret with almost no time at all. It's a lot of golden flux, um, and so it can really, really snowball unicorns of love here. I like the game plan. Uh, it makes a lot of sense uh, in regards to what they're trying to do, which is snowball the game with Lucian mid, uh, Wukong, and, uh, you know, Ziggs, I'm sorry, ADC. You know, with, the, with those picks, they're really trying to end really before 30 minutes, 35 minutes. I think if it gets to 35 minutes, you're really looking uh, favored towards 369. I think this matchup is already kind of underdog situation for Unicorns of Love, so they're trying to pick winning lanes here. Um, so you've got... The Unicorns of Love trying to snowball. And as we get on the Rift here, uh, we've, got a, we've got a couple. Uh, we've got both teams just fanning, so nothing interesting. Super, super intense going on. we got Lucian with the press the attack. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, Scion with the grasp. Going to want to trade and proc and gra gra grab that extra free health up the top lane. Phase Rush Graves. Very common pick to escape and get out. Uh, he did bring the Flash, not the Ignite. So not nearly as much aggression. But once again, uh, Top Esports is trying to scale up. The infinite scaling scion with his W uh, lets him get, you know, infinite health, really, depending on how much farm he can get. Uh, you have Jackie Love with Lulu. Ash Lulu late, late game is going to be pretty insane um, with the potential to one-shot, you know, No Man's or Gadget coming out of Knight's Sendra in the mid lane if it gets to that point and he can find an opening, as well as really good teamfight presence with a... Uh, unleashed force into a scatter of the week um, across the team can really lead to some nasty, nasty, you know, multiple man stuns. Um, uh, so there's a lot of team fight potential. I would really, I think TS uh, top esports is going to be playing for the late game. Um, but I don't think that's going to stop their aggression necessarily early. I do believe that they're still going to push their advantage as much as they can. Um, they're just going to look for team fights more so with that Scion pick rather than playing around dominating the top lane. As we get into bot, though, some aggressive trading coming on already. Jackie Love, wow, they've got Sansa's Flash already. That is the Ash Lulu power level one. All, all you have to do is hit that uh, slow from Ash, and you can keep it going forever. As we have a little bit of trading here in the 
the mid lane. Uh, but once, you know, something like that happens, expect the junglers to be looking bot. Because right now, Carson knows that Santos doesn't have flash. They're playing against the Ziggs, and they're pushing in, which is uh, quite surprising because you would expect the Ziggs to be the one pushing in. But, you know, realistically, it's kind of understandable because Ash, with the volley level 1 and the lethal tempo, uh, all she has to do is volley the enemy champions, and then she can push the wave really quickly. Uh, with the volley damage hitting the, the minions as well, uh, as well as the bonus attack speed she gets. Some some aggressive trading up here top. Ooh, wow. Well played with the Trickster coming at a boss there to dodge Scion's Q. Uh, well played, well played. On Anas Naseg, just going to be kiting the camps here. Uh, great player in his individual region. Um, they used to be in the EU, and now they're in the LCL. Uh, which is, I, I believe, the German League. I'm not, not exactly sure how that works, but they've been absolutely dominating since transferring over there. Uh, number one seed there. So they've been really, really doing a lot of work and trying to, you know, let people know that while they're not in the EU LEC anymore, they are still, you know, uh, a contender for Worlds. And they've done an excellent job so far. I mean, bes besides being 0-3, uh, they did manage to make it through play-ins into the group stage, which is where we're at now, um, by putting on some incredible performances. Uh, and, and they're in a tough group. You know, you've got the likes of Top Esports. You have Unicorns of Love. You have, I'm sorry, obviously Unicorns of Love. But you have FlyQuest, um, who has been playing phenomenally uh, for the NA region. And then you also have, uh, ooh, what is the fourth team? Uh, I, can't, I can't think of it at the moment, but but some really really tough contenders in this group. Um, it, it's the Koreas. See, I can't actually put my mind into it. Number three Korean, but um, yeah, they have they have some tough competition. So by no means would I say zero three is a terrible scoreline, you know, considering the pick the big picture of worlds. Like they they've made it here, and, and being from a minor region that they are, that's. It's a great accomplishment. They should be proud of themselves just for making it here. But, you know, they'd really like to put a, get a win on the board before uh, Worlds ends. So, let's see if they can't do it here versus Top Esports. We kind of got a lull state right now. We've got Air Dragon spawning in a, in a little bit. Ooh, good trade coming out of Night. Hits the Stun, the Scatter of the Weak, and the Force of Will. Um, but, No Man's is pushing in. He'll have the priority for Ananaseg to look for... Uh, you know, anything they want, look for the invade here, maybe get some deep vision down, pop the Scryer's Bloom, pop the Blast Cone if they can. Oh, maybe they look for a three-man bot? No? Okay. Well, they're just heading that way, just putting pressure on the map, and that's one of the great, you know, the, the best things about these high elo mids, the, these pro players, they know that you could sit in mid, right, and wait for the next wave to come, but but what's the point? You, you, you know, you're sitting there for... 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. Oh, as we have a gank top, uh, boss is 6. 369 is getting routed around. Uh, hits the knockup. Ah, 369 with a good flash. Gets out of there safely. Uh, very tanky man early. Um, but, but back to the mid lane. Uh, whenever you have a situation where you can threaten that you're doing something, not even necessarily doing something, it makes the other laners play and respect the fact that you could be there. Which is exactly what No Man's and Anasek were trying to do there. And in the end, they get 369's flash. Um, unfortunately, though, Karsa spots this. And unfortunately for Unicorns of Love. Uh, Karsa spots their top lane. They're ganking their top laner and instantly takes the dragon as punishment. Which is great play. Uh, Graves can do it extremely well and fast. Uh, pretty much from level 4 and, uh, four and above. Anasek hovering back up here looking for the repeat gank on the flashless... A Scion. 369 getting the better of him in the 1v1, though. Boss trying to push in the wave. You see Lucian with a Hex Drinker first item. That's, you know, really trying to make sure he doesn't die tonight from some cheese. Uh, you know, Scatter the Weak into R. With that Electrocute, you know, proc. Uh, a lot of burst potential, you know, potentially possible coming from that Cinder. So he wants to play it as safe as possible while also, you know, maintaining a damage edge. Uh, oh, and aggressively trading with the ult, just trying to poke him out of lane, get some pressure, 
Uh, maybe look for this Rift Herald that'll be spawning soon. Maybe maybe Force Knight into an awkward recall timing. As 369 goes in with the ult, Karsa's here to back him up. Boss does not have flash. Uh, and we have a TP coming in from No Man's, which is canceled. I believe it was No Man's. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Uh, oh, and the bot lane. Action all over the map right now. Uh, it looks like Scatter the Week probably stopped No Man's ult. Uh, or Knight probably stopped it. Um, I'll have to get a replay on that to see exactly what happens, but uh, not looking good for Unicorns of Love. Looking really good for top esports, though, with plays all over the map. We have a deep teleport coming in from 369 by Wukong. I don't like this commit, um, but maybe maybe it's not bad. Maybe, maybe they're trying to bait it. Okay, that's a good kill. That's a good pickup. Uh, let's see if Boss can make it out of here with his life, though. Uh, Scion, not that fast. Uh, he does have the passive, but it, it just isn't enough to catch up to that movement speed that Wukong gets with his ult. Um, so very well played from Boss. Good, you know, good eyes to get one back for his team. I uh, really respect the play. Nice kill by No Man, so that would. Um, but as Unicorns of Love start up this Rift Herald, we'll see if Top Esports can test. We have Lulu here first. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Nautilus is also here, but we have, right now it's looking like a 4v4, uh, I couldn't tell who got it, I think Unicorns of Love got the Rift Herald, they deny it from Top Esports, but they can't actually pick it up, so Top Esports is going to deny the Rift Herald, uh, they get 100 gold for their efforts, and they blow on an Osex Flash, uh, and really don't pick up much for that, uh, we'll see if anyone tries to go for it, I doubt it, um, there it is, it disappeared, so... Denied the Rift Herald there. Uh, well played from Top Esports. Yeah. They got the Dragon. They denied the Rift Herald. And they, they got the 100 gold, but they didn't actually pick up the objective. So, you know, on the back end of it, not, not you know, really well played by Top Esports. Uh, we have a little bit of itemization coming in right now. Just components mainly. Got the tier. Oh, back to the bottom lane replay. Just straight up Jackie Love running down Gadget. And that, that's real, real ooh, here's the scatter of weak deny as well. Wow. Really well spotted. Oh, and they get the double kill off of Lulu. In, incredible play by Top Esports bot lane. Uh, knowing their limits, knowing they're playing into a Ziggs who can't have that same level of sustained damage that Lulu and Ash can bring, uh, while Unicorns of Love can poke them down. Uh, it's not ever going to stick because, you know, Jackie Love is playing a champion that prioritizes building Bork first, so... Unless you can 100 to 0 Jackie Love, which is going to be really difficult, you know, between the polymorph from Lulu, the shielding, the healing that he's going to put on Ash, you know, uh, with all of that, ooh, as we look for, Karsa looks for this red buff, uh, with all of that, it's going to be very hard to kill their bot lane. Let's see if Karsa can manage to steal this. It looks like on Nasek knows. I think Karsa probably walked past. Uh, yeah. But I walked past that blue ward, so Carson's just wasting a lot of time here, honestly. I, I don't think Carson knows he was spotted. Um, but but Ananaseg is playing this well, pulling the red buff out of Carson's range. Um, but Carson is going to look for that bot lane dive. Oh, no. Oh, Ziggs is going to get punished again, and that was easy. They make it look beautiful. Uh, let's see if Ananaseg can get something done in return. Carson is zoned away from his team, so Carson's going to need to find a way out of here, and I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Oh, that was a good E towards his team with, oh, wow. The Lulu ult coming through being so clutch right there. Are they And they chase down Sansas as well. It's just a disaster for Unicorns of Love. Top Esports is punishing everything. And you know, that's really what you expect from the number one LPL seed, our MSI champions. This is, this is what you want to see from a team like this if you expect this team to win Worlds. And really, um, no, no fault of Unicorns of Love there. Like, uh, they, they were trying to punish the overextension by Karsa, but really they just couldn't get enough done. They didn't have the damage early. Um, and I, it really comes down to having an ADC versus having Ziggs. Uh, and I don't think Ziggs is a terrible pick, but I don't think that he's a good pick into this comp because you can't poke out an ADC that has, uh, well, it's going to be Ocean Soul. That's going to make it even worse. But you can't poke out an ADC that's building Bork, right? You land Q, she autos three times, and she heals it back. So... So really, this Ziggs pick is not going to be able to get a lot done. You're never going to have the push, which is what you want as Ziggs, to use that Satchel Charge on the towers. Uh, because, you know, you have Ash with Lulu, who are unkillable and can just approach the wave at all points. 
Uh, Ananasa getting a cheeky Raptor still here. I like that. Getting, getting yourself a little gold back. But right now it's 12 minutes in the game. And there's already a 5,000 gold deficit, just about. Um, so, you know, Top Esports is, is punishing really well. And, and really, they have a better late game, in my opinion. Just from the infinite scaling Scion, the, uh, you know, you've got Ash Lulu, who are going to be pretty much unkillable. Uh, it, it's, I don't want to say it's doomed by any means for Unicorns of Love. Uh, but Jackie Love just sit there, uh, sat there and took one uh, as we have a pause momentarily for uh, what appears to be uh, Ash DCing. Jackie Love DCing. I wonder if they're going to roll back the server a couple seconds, get rid of that poke. Um, Jackie Love might not even care because he can just heal it back with the Vampire Acceptor if he's, uh, he's picked up. But it's, uh, this is a good moment, I think, for Unicorns of Love to regroup refocus think about what's going on how to get back in the game because right now we're looking at a 5,000 gold deficit right and that's a hard thing to come back from when it's only 12 minutes in the game because at this point 5,000 gold translates to you know an extra 25 ad on the adc an extra you know 300 mana with you know 40 ap for the mid laner you know an extra like you know 200 well i'm sorry like 400 health for the scion or like 60 armor like at this point it's going to be very very tough to punish um any mistakes that top esports makes just because they're all going to be tankier have more damage and if there are more people and they're if they have the same amount of people if it's a three versus three for top esports and the coins of love top esports is just going to have the raw statistics to win that fight the raw damage the raw tank stats everything they need so really, Unicorns of Love, at this point, is going to have to look for some cheeky plays, uh, maybe find some picks in the jungle, you know, force odd number plays, look for dives that they can force 4v2. Um, you know, Ash and Lulu are pushing, constantly pushing. So if they can find Karsa in the top jungle and they can force four man down bot, they can definitely punish this Ash Lulu. But they just need to find a, a way to force these odd number fights or force picks. Because otherwise, a straight 3v3, 4v4, 5v5, they're not going to win just based on the stats, right? We have Lucian early, who is strong. But at this point, Cinder has picked up her core you know, item, or is getting close to it. She's going to have uh, kill pressure on the Lucian. She's, she's not a bad pick by him in laning phase either, um, because they both have very relative safe poke. Um, and safe farming so both of them kind of bring you know lucian's power spikes kind of falling off he's, he's known as a lane bully and he's not bullying the syndra he's not going to get ahead uh, he's going to have a hard time getting into these fights where he's going to get run down by scion uh you know he's going to get he's not going to be able to get through the tank scion who's going to be like shielded by lulu you know he's going to be polymorphed if he ever gets near the lulu uh, there's just like not a lot that Lucian can do in these team fights, so we'll see how that goes. The Ash Lulu presents a huge problem for uh, Unicorns of Love. Um, they don't have; they do have the Unicorn. I'm sorry, they do have a sustained damage in Lucian, but it's just not what Ash Lulu is going to bring. Um, Ziggs will never really contest Cendra, so really, if you think about it, it, it's the standard meta. They've just swapped their ADC and mid laner uh, bot and mid. Um, and, and it really makes it difficult because they didn't get much out of swapping it. They could have played Ziggs mid and maybe had a better opportunity in Descendra. Or they could have played Lucian bot. Uh, not really a bot laner as much anymore. Um, but he's still, you know, an ADC. He's still playable down there. Uh, but I, I would have... I don't know. I think this comes down to draft for Unicorns of Love. And I, I, think, I think for the next two games that they have today... I hope they definitely consider taking a standard ADC down bot and not really this Ziggs pick. I don't think it's been working out the way they hoped it would. And you're not playing teams that are, you know, going to fall for this type of cheese meta play where they're going to let you push towers, right? Like, in, in theory, it's great. Uh, you get Rift, you push bot, and you snowball the Ziggs who can satchel charge the turret. But the problem is, you got Rift, you got denied Rift, um... And now you're waiting for second rift, which is only going to spawn after plates have fallen or fallen. So at this point, it's really, really tough for Unicorns of Love to get back into the game. As this pause continues, I'd love to get an update on what exactly is going on. 
But I'm going to go ahead and see if we can't um, get our analyst desk to talk about it real quick. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have an analyst desk. It's just me. Uh, I guess I could just skip forward through this pause, but... You know, I, I started solo casting recently as a hobby. I've been really enjoying it, so I want to take this opportunity to focus on how I would, you know, respond to a situation like this if I was actually casting. And I think one of the important things is to find a narrative that, you know, engages your audience. Because let's be honest, no one wants to sit here and watch the Pauls. We came here to watch League of Legends between the best team at Worlds, you know, supposedly in top esports, uh, versus Unicorns of Love, who is a fantastic team in their region. They're just... You know, they, they don't have the opportunity opportunity to play teams like this, like, uh, you know, Fun plus Phoenix, like th these excellent teams that are, you know, constantly world's contenders, MSI contenders, top of the top, right? Um, so it's harder for them to get the practice that they need to compete on the top level, right? It's like, it's like if Tiger Woods, you know, probably a bad example. All right, let's go. LeBron James could only play high school players during the, in the year, right? But then, you know, he had to go play in the NBA uh, after playing high school players in the NBA Finals, after playing high school players all year long. Do you think he's going to have the experience that he needed to beat those NBA caliber players? Well, it's LeBron James, so maybe. But, like, the point is, you know, he, he needs to practice against the best players to contend with the best players because the best players are doing these small things that no one else is doing. And you can't learn how to punish those small things in, in this short time frame that Worlds is. I mean, it's a long tournament, but it's, you know, in relative comparison to the year, it's very, very difficult to actually contend with these, these fantastic top-of-the-top players when you just don't have the experience or the practice or the knowledge of how they're going to beat you, you know, what they're going to do and what made them the top players. So... You know, it, it's it's a difficult situation for Unicorns of Love, um, but I, I, I want to re reiterate, I think that even though they're 0-3, they're not playing badly. Their drafts are a little off. They're making some bad calls. But, but you know, if they go back in their region, they're number one in their region. You know, this type of strategy works in their region. This is what they bring to the table because it's worked for them in the past. So when you look... At Top Esports, it's difficult uh, to fault Unicorns of Blood because Top Esports is the best, you know, team, arguably in one of the hardest regions in the world. So when you have that, you know, that region that's preparing T or Top Esports to, to be that good, Unicorns of Love is, is going to struggle to find success. Now, what they can do is slow the game down, slow the pace down, Try to find a footing um, and maybe force these odd number fights if you can find them. But you're going to have to get Karsa out of position, which is not very common for one of the best junglers in the world. Um, so you're going to have to find him top. And you're going to have to bait him up there somehow, right? So maybe you send and you make your top laner overextend, right? Uh, and you hope that he survives, right? Uh, Karsa goes up there to punish and then you force four man bot. Even if you lose your top laner in that situation, if you kill both their bot laners, who I believe have bounties on their head, uh, that gold is going to equal out. And then you can transition that into a dragon, right? So what you want to do is you want to bait Karsa up to the top of the river. You want to bait him to fight the Wukong. You want to hope. You want to let your Wukong know this is going to happen, first of all. Uh, don't do this without telling Wukong. It's a terrible idea. Um, but pray and hope. Oh, as we get back in the game here. Uh, but, I, you know, if we can get, and Karsa's already on the bottom side of the jungle because he knows where he needs to be, but if you can get Karsa top and you can force these 4v2s bot, uh, or 4v3s bot even, right, uh, you can definitely win a team fight off that. But as I say that, uh, it looks like Ash, Lulu are going to get the tower. Uh, Ziggs is walking back bot with their jungler right now. Oh, excuse me. Oh, great dredge line by Santa's. That is Yuyanja. It is looking good. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna chase us too far though, and they're gonna get collapsed on. And just like that, they get baited in. Like I was talking about, Carsa's bot lane. They did see the play. They wanted to force uh, 4B. You know, they wanted to force the fight, but obviously Carsa was there. They didn't do the prep work that needed to be done to get Carsa out of the way, and they get punished for it. 
just like that. And Jackie Love is going to get looked for a plate. Oh my god, Jackie Love is just straight diving no man's. And he lives on top of it. Jackie Love is a monster with Yuyanja. These two players are just so good together. And this is what makes them the best bot lane, arguably, in the world. And at the same type, time, No Man's is getting denied mid wave. Gadget teleported bot, so isn't going to pick up that wave. Uh, Lilio will pick up some of it, but, but not all of it. He denied a lot of the experience. And, and this is off of the back of a great hook by Santas, right? It's just this little bit of overaggression right here and instantly punished. You tunneled. In your own jungle, you think you're safe, but you don't have vision. You don't know where Karsa is, and you can't chase it. You, you can't chase it. If you've done the prep work, and you know Karsa's top, then you have an opportunity right there to do the, you know, get those kills. But if you don't, and, and you know you chase that, and Karsa's there, that that thing is going to happen exactly like that. Now this is what I was talking about with Gadget C's, you know, siege potential right there. He's going to kill the turret here. Uh, that satchel charge will take, you know, quite a bit of the health off of it. Oh, on and on second. Santa's wrapping around. Jackie Love, no flash. Santa's plays this well. He doesn't need to hook Jackie Love necessarily. He just needs to get to the wall. On and on second gets the kill. And that's 850 gold back in the pocket of uh, of Unicorns of Love. And that's what you'd like to see. Now, it's traded back for a turret. Um, but this is exactly what I was talking about. Karsa's top. And they go to punish the bot lane. And uh, I hope they knew that the, the Carson was top. <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm to assume that was how the play was set up. Uh, but, but that's exactly what you want to see right there. Carson being top, and you punish their overextended bot lane. Because that's all that's been happening all game long. As Jackie Love and Yuyanja have been pushing nonstop. And right there, you know, they were behind their, their tier 1 tower, even though their tier 1 tower was dead. Um, but but that's, that's the plays that you need. You need a lot of those to get back in the game. Because at this point, you're at a 5,500 gold deficit. And you're just hoping for the best at this point. Excuse me. Um, but but that shutdown, excellent start to getting back into it. You know? Graves has got a 400 gold bounty, so I think maybe you should look for some plays on Karsa now if you're going to Karns of Love. You know? It's these little tiny things like that. Like, you want to find these bounties and see if you can't get it, uh, get it done. But as I say that, uh, we have Scion scaling even more infinitely with the, the extra health he gets from his passive W. So we will we will see how that, that scaling continues. It's going to be very hard for them to get through that because No Man's is not building Bork, right? So he's not ever going to be able to get through the flat health that 369 has. No Man's is building essentially burst, uh, burst solution, which is not a bad thing. It's great for killing Jackie Love. It's great for killing Yuyanja if he's out of position. Now, here, as I say that, here we go. We have a fight going on. A lot of ults coming in, but look at this Scion ult right on top of Santa's. Instantly takes out the support for Unicorns of Love. Jackie Love chasing down on Naseg. Naseg is very fast, though, so that, that might be a risky. If he takes the recall here, this is a cheeky recall. I would love. Oh, there it is. Yep. Good word by Yuyanja. Doesn't face check on Naseg, who does have kill potential. Uh, Yuyan's just going to be annoying and stop the base right here. Oh, and set up for Knight to pick up the kill. Beautiful work. Sets it up perfectly, lets his mid laner get the kill. Yuyanja knows he doesn't need gold. Knight does. Uh, you know, Yuyanja's going to be useful no matter what. He's got Polymorph. He's got Shields. He's got R's. He's got Slows. Uh, he's got everything he needs. He's got Vision. You know, Yuyanja doesn't need to be the carry. He knows that he has one of the best mid laners in the world, one of the best ADCs in the world, one of the best junglers in the world. All he has to do is sit there, look pretty, and help them out. And that's exactly what he does. He gives Knight the gold, and that's why he's one of the best supports in the world. He knows uh, what he needs to do. Now, Karsa is chasing down Knight, or I'm sorry, Boss. Uh, easy kill. Wow, solo kill, too. Knight didn't even need to get involved there. Very strong graves at this point. 5 0 and 4, going lethality, Berserker, Greaves, and Jungle item already completed. Uh, probably sitting on a little bit of gold there, too. Um, and he starts trying to end this one out as quickly as possible. And they're, they're going to get a little damage on the tier 2. They're going to back off smartly. Knight doesn't greed for this wave, which is, you know, me and solo queue, I would have taken that wave and died right there. Uh, their entire bot lane's about to collapse, and I would have said thank you for the 4 CS, and mostly casters, like 40 gold worth of gold. Uh, kills, minion kills. But let's, let's see how this fight starts off again. Uh, excellent Scion ult, right to get, you know, knock their front line out of the fight immediately. And, you know, once Wukong and Nautilus are dead, there, there's not a lot 
gadget no man's non-nonsense can do. God of the not tanky. No man's not tanky. And Gadget's not tanky. And even their tanks aren't that tanky, if I'm being honest. So, like, it's very difficult for them to find a situation where they can win once their tanks are knocked out. Mm. Oh, excuse me. But, with that being said, we do have the Seraph's Embrace coming through, through for Gadget. We have uh, Mana Mune being done for no man's uh trying to upgrade that to masamune as soon as possible we do have the trinity force coming in through wukong for wukong huge power spike we have leandre's almost done and the jungle item done for ananaseg uh, you know their their item spikes are coming through their power spikes are coming through but i think at this point it's probably a little bit too late instant cleanse by jackie love on the ananaseg ult Unfortunately, it looks like Santa's is about to be chased down here. Uh, it's going to be probably a team fight. Look at that Scion damage. That is full tank Scion, who just took out 80, 90% of Gadget's health bar. Uh, Karsa going for the ult there on him. It's looking like this is going to be an easy team fight. Wipe. Uh, no problems there at all, and they're instantly going to turn for the Baron. Uh, Toppy Sports knows how to turn, like, clean this. Ooh, end this one out cleanly. Uh, all we need to do right now. Tank the Baron, kill the Baron, push the waves. Probably take a reset after Baron, honestly. They're all, you know, you got Karsa and 369 pretty low. We're going to see if Unicorns of Love try to contest here. They do pull off the Baron and instantly 369 chases down No Man's. He hits the slow. No Man's has no flash, and No Man's is probably dead here. It doesn't look like No Man's going to be able to get away. Uh, 369 flashing in for the pop up. Instantly, good slow by Gadget. Ooh, good arrow. Uh, really zones Gadget the wrong way. It's going to make it brutal. It does get on a Naseg out. Uh, it's not bad. Gadget may be looking for the execute. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> they, they pretty much told him to run to the tower or run to us. Uh, great zoning ult by that. You know, that Ash really set that up. He had to go up. But he couldn't go down. Or he was going to run into Ash ult. Well played by Jackie Love. Good arrow positioning. And just like that, you have a bunch, you know, a couple more kills. It's 18 to 2 for Top Esports. And this is really how it should look. You got one of the top teams at Worlds. I know I've said that already, but I just want to reiterate how good this team is. And and Unicorns of Love is playing it out as best they can. But when you when you compete against a team like this, it's very difficult. Scion ulting it. There we go. Uh that's unique interaction between Wukong and Scion, though. He can block that ult with his W. I, I do like that. It's very well played um, by Boss. Knowing that that matchup, and knowing that he can do that. But as we look here, Top Esports just going to look to deny as much as they can, take the Krugs away, take any of the. Wow, that damage from Knight. Knight has Magi's at 14 stacks, Ludens, and he's also working towards his. The movement speed AP item. Uh, Spellbinder, excuse me. So it's looking like he's going to you know, be able to one-shot probably the front line at this point, if I'm being honest. Um, Knight is pretty pretty far ahead, brutally far ahead. You know, No Man's is looking for a play here. Jackie, oh, good damage onto Jackie Love. Gets Jackie Love's flash. Um, but at this point, I think it's just a little bit too much, too late, too much gold in the pockets of Top Esports. Um, with Jackie Love having flash there, there's just no chance to really kill him. Uh, but... but Regardless, you know, it's a good look for No Man's and Gadgets. You know, good look for the play. Uh, they are pulling in 369, who's probably not going to take any damage because he's Scion and really fed. Um, also, that's Ocean Soul. So, you know, if you thought you could kill the Scion with 3,000 health before, you're definitely not killing him now. It's just looking like a top esports victory, and I don't really think there's a whole lot Unicorns of Love can do to come back in this one at this point. Uh, Unnustic does get the Scuttle Crab. I like it. Uh, blows his flash, probably the right move because he knows Toppy Sports can just if he goes up to top lane and comes down, Toppy Sports can just run him down for that. Uh, but now he doesn't have flash. There's no way he's going to be able to contest this Baron. Maybe Gadget, Gadget and Santos look for something cheeky. They're going to teleport in. They're going to force one last fight probably. Um, maybe two. Maybe two more fights. But this is definitely looking like one of the final fights. Uh, Toppy Sports not taking any chances with this Baron. Instant. Uh, Mercurials from Yanja. Great pickup. Instantly QSS is the sleep from Ananase. Uh, but they do, do stop the Baron, so that's a, that's a good sign from uh, Unicorns of Love. Um, but like I said, at this point, I would probably probably be looking for... Ooh, 
This is an interesting satchel charge, but it's Tank Scion with Ocean Soul. Uh, and just like that, they trade back. Uh, kill for boss. Kill and boss for knight. So, yeah, at this point, if I'm Unicorns of Love, I'm asking myself, who do we fight next? You know, how do we prepare mentally to get rid of this loss? Because it's a tough loss. Um, it's 2 to 20. It's not good. You know, that's definitely not going to help their mental. And what do we do to win the next game and not have this happen? And I think the answer to that is don't play top esports because this team is insane. But other than that, uh, you know, I, I think maybe we switch Ziggs and no, you know, and Lucian. Maybe we play a Senna bot if we can, if it's not banned. Uh, we play like Ash. We, I don't think Lucian mid's a bad pick. All right, but if we're gonna do that, we need some AP. Ooh, instant kill on the No Man's. Just a little bit out of position there. Can't dodge the Ash R uh, and, you know, Enchanted Crystal Arrow and the Scion ult. Uh, Scion just walking between turrets right now. 369 really doesn't care uh, about this game, apparently, because it's already over in this man's mind. Like, he's between two towers, and he just regens to full health because he's got Ocean Soul and he's Scion. Uh, he's just going to tank the turret for fun here. Uh <laughs> 369 really just enjoying himself this game and it's really great to see you know you want to see a team like this in high spirits uh obviously they're stomping that's going to make anybody feel good but you know it, it's good to see this level of confidence coming from one of the top teams it it shows that they're fully prepared to win uh, worlds and that they can have good mentality and it's obviously easier whenever you're winning but you know this is what you want to see from the top teams as uh, Toppy Sports looks to end it out here, they are going to push mid, looking for the tower. Good knockout by 369. 369's job pretty much at this point is to stand in front of his team. Um, and since he has Ocean Soul and he's Scion, it doesn't matter where he stands in front of his team. You know, it could be right there between two towers in front of five enemy champions. Uh, it doesn't really matter. He's not going to take damage because he's, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it speaks for itself. Like, yeah, you don't need a caster to tell you that 369 is probably never going to die. <laughs> At this point, he's a raid boss. Uh, <laughs> oh, he hits the knockout too. And, wow, 369's unkillable. I wonder if he has Q again. Oh, there it is. Oh, he went for, he didn't go for Santas, he went for Gadget. <laughs> I would have liked to see him go for Santas to pick up the kill, but uh, oh, he, he takes a Fountain Laser, he's still okay. <laughs> They're going to kill Gadget on his spawn. <laughs> I'm sorry, Santos. <laughs> and yeah, that, that, that's the game right there. Uh, quick and easy, top of the esports. Obviously making a little... Ooh, get Jackie Love in return. Good shutdown by Gadget. But yeah, that's the game. Unfortunately, too little, too late. And uh, well played to both teams. Unfortunately, top esports just a little bit of a little bit of a class above, just, you know, uh, based on where they're at. But these are the favorites to win the tournament. Unicorns of Love had to, you know, go through the play-ins. Um, and, and while they've had an excellent run, Unfortunately, it's just the caliber of region and teams. And, you know, Unicorns of Love needs to keep their heads up. They need to keep trying. And they have two more games to play today. So hopefully they can find a win in one of those and not go 0-6 in Worlds. Um, but I have faith they can do it. And so should you.